Learners, you are reminded to read your instructions that are given to you at the front of the question paper before actually proceeding on to the questions itself. Looking at question one, we are confronted with Sam and Zippo who provide garden services. Sam charges 130 per square meter to cut lawn and Zippo charges a call out fee of 300 rand plus 89 cents per square meter. Miss Livuno wants to hire garden service providers to cut the lawn. The area of the yard is 671 square meter. Just by looking at this information, we can see that there is a yard and the square meters are given to us for this yard. Now, in order for cutting the lawn, we have two people that are promoting their services and they have their respective charges. The only difference that we must note is that Zippo has a call out fee of 300 Rand. That means after sorting out his payment per square meter, we need to add an extra 300 Rand to his amount. Now that we have an understanding of the information given to us, we can look at the respective questions. 1.1.1, you see it says calculate the total cost charged by Sam if he cuts lawn on Miss Livuno's yard. So we are able to answer this question because we know the area of the yard and we know how much Sam would charge to cut the certain square meter of the yard so we take 130 and we will multiply it by the area of the yard which is 671 multiplying that through we'd get an answer in rands of 872,30 cents if you do have access to the memos you can follow through as i explained or you could take down the amounts that i call out and later apply it to what i've explained and see for yourself if you can attempt it on your own it becomes good practice to attempt it on your own and then verify your answer against the memo that you have or the answers to which I call out. 1.1.2 Calculate the total cost charged by Zippo if he cuts the lawn in Miss Livuno's yard. So now we are looking at Zippo's amount and remember that we, although we have the call charge per square meter which is 89 cents Although it says 0 0.89, remember that 0 stands for the Rand section, but this is 89 cents per square meter. But remember, the 300 Rand must be added as soon as we multiply our square meters amount. So we know the size of the yard, 671. We multiply it by the 89 cents, and we get an amount of 597,19 cents. But remember, we need to add the 300 Rand callout fee. And when we add this, we arrive at an amount of 897,19 cents. 1.1.3 Which garden service provider is cheaper? Now, notice this is a follow up question from question 1.1.1 and 1.1.2 because we've worked out the two charges and amounts that these individuals will charge to cut the grass. So all we need to do is take the cheaper one. And remember, with um, Sam, it was 872,30. And with Zippo, it was 897,19. So therefore, we can see that Sam's garden service is a cheaper option. Question 1.1.4. Sam's lawnmower consumes 5 liters of petrol to cut the whole yard. Calculate the petrol cost if 1 litre costs 15 rand 98. Since we know the price of 1 litre, which is 15 rand 98, 5 litres would just mean that we have to multiply it by 5, and our final answer would be 79 rand and 90 cents. 1.1.5 Zippo went to a restaurant and enjoyed some food. The bill was 389 rand. He gave the waitress 12% of the bill amount as a tip. Calculate the amount of the tip. We need to find out 12% of 389. So punching this into our calculator, 12% times 389. And we'd arrive at 46 cents and 68 cents. 
In the next section, 1.2, we are given some information about James and his friends who ran a 21,1 kilometer race. James took 145 minutes to finish the race. So by looking at this information in this box, we find that distance has been given to us, which is 21,1 kilometer, and the time has been given to us, which is 145 minutes. Now that we know our information, we can go to the first question under that section, which is 1.2.1. Convert 145 minutes to hours and minutes. So whenever we need to convert a certain amount of minutes into hours and minutes, we need to divide by 60 because there are 60 minutes in one hour. So we take the 145 minutes and we divide it by 60. And we arrive at an answer in our calculators, which is 2,4166667. Now, the most common thing that learners do is they take that answer and straight away say it will be 2 hours and 41. They'll round it off to make it 42 minutes. And they assume that this would be the answer. If we had to look at 2,4166, the 2 in front of the comma, that part would be correct and that would be our hours so so far we have two hours which is the correct answer thus far but the part after the comma which now becomes 0 comma 4166667 so remember now we are taking out the the numbers after the comma so it becomes 0 comma 41111 if we just had to look at those numbers and its position you have to learn positioning in terms of numbers so that number 2,41 now is made up of 2 and is also made up of 0, 0,416666. So we take that part of the 0, 0,416666 and we multiply that by 60. Because remember, we're still dealing with minutes and converting into hours. So this portion here, the 0, 0,41 is part of an hour, but we need to convert that into actual minutes because we want to know how many minutes exactly. So once we multiply the 0, 0,4166666 times 60, we'd arrive at 25 minutes. So therefore, we find our answer will be, our final answer will be 2 hours and 25 minutes. 1.2.2, determine the run rate in kilometer per minute. Now the clue is in the question, determine the run rate in kilometer per minute minute kilometer per minute means kilometer divided by minute there is an idea given to you for the approach that you need to take for this question so you take your kilometers that you know and you divide it by the minutes that you know and you arrive at your answer which is known as the run rate so let's do that from the information given to us earlier we read that 21 comma 1 is the distance so that's our kilometer amount. We're going to take that amount and we're going to divide it by the number of minutes that, that has been given to us, which is 145 in the box. So taking those two amounts, dividing that, we'll arrive at 0, 0,1455 and that would be our kilometer per minute. Next, we come to 1.3 and there's additional information given to us. In the box, it states a mat mathematical literacy educator projects a map with the scale 1 is to 50,000. So from this information, we can gather that it's 1 would be on the map and the 50,000 would be on the ground because we know how scales are written. So whenever scales are written, it is the map is to the actual distance on the ground. Now that we know this, we can go to 1.3.1. .1. Explain what the scale on the projected map means. Using our knowledge on how scales are written, we know by reading this 1 is to 50,000. It means that one unit on the map represents 50,000 units on the ground or in actual life. 1.3.2 Determine the actual distance in kilometers if the measurement on the map is 4 cm. In approaching this question, you need to use what is called the cross multiplication method. So you start off by writing down what's given to you. So we write down the scale because it is information that has been given to us. So the scale is 1 is to 50,000. We write that first. 
then remember the scale is written as map is to actual distance on the ground now reading our information from the question they give us that the measurement on the map is four centimeter so keeping that columns and following those headings it would be map is to actual or should you say map is to reality so we know that the four centimeter will go under map so the four centimeter would go under the column called the map and the latter part which is the actual will have an x and you cross multiply that and you arrive at your answer so if you cross multiply as it is written you would be cross multiplying first 50,000 times 4 this would give us an answer of 200,000 but remember all the values that we've placed on this working now thus far is all in centimeter the question requires that we present our answer in kilometers so we need to know our conversion from centimeter to kilometer and you realize that they are hundred thousand centimeters in one kilometer now that we know we'll be dealing with a value of hundred thousand but learners tend to get confused in terms of whether to multiply or whether to divide you could remember either one of this that when you go from small to big meaning centimeter to kilometer you will divide when you're going from big to small if we are going from kilometer to centimeter we will multiply so either one of that you can remember and then apply it as you see it in this particular question we are going from centimeter to kilometer because our answer requires that it be presented as a kilometer so moving from centimeter to kilometer we will divide so we take our 200,000 and we divide it by 100,000 which is the conversion from centimeter to kilometer they are 100,000 centimeters in one kilometer and we arrive at an answer of two kilometers 1.4 the photo below shows the weather prediction for Johannesburg on the 4th 5th and 6th of March 2020 looking at our picture we see there is a weather forecast and there is a key which shows us the symbol for the rainfall and if we look at each of these days Wednesday the 4th Thursday the 5th and Friday the 6th each of this have a certain amount of rain also with this you find that there are maximum temperatures shown here for each day and minimum temperatures shown for each day 1.4.1 states give the percentage chance of rain on 5th March 2020 now using the key and we know that the symbol for rain is given so we go to the 5th of March and we see that there is 10 percent chance of rain and that would be your answer you may find that some of the answers are fairly easy keep in mind that um, paper 1 is made up of level 1 and level 2 type of questions 1.4.2 which day shows the lowest minimum temperature now minimum is the smaller amounts of the two so we need to look at each of these days and we notice that there is a 12 on the 5th of March 2020 the Thursday so that will be our answer now remember in exam conditions sometimes you tend to rush the question requires that you give the day as your answer and not the amount of the minimum temperature so learners may rush and write down 12 degrees instead the question requires that you explain the day so your answer would either be Thursday or would either be 5th March 2020.